Hello there. So what I would like to do with you is just very briefly, in about 10 minutes or so, explain Parsons' theory of the family in a very short summary. Now, Parsons is a key figure. He appears very frequently throughout the course, and we'll see him a lot next year. Um, and he's one of our key functionalists. Part of the reason for this is, is Parsons' work is predominantly theory based. He's what we call an armchair sociologist. A lot of what he has to say uh, he kind of comes up with ideas. He might have some circumstantial evidence to support it, but reality-wise, um, none of this is proven. But we will look at what he has to say. And what I've tried to summarise on this one graphic is all the elements of his theory and how they relate to one another. So what we do, we'll start going through this at the very top here with this big arrow. Now, Parsons looked at the family and how it shifted between the pre-modern and the modern. So the pre-modern was anything before 1750. The modern was the 1750s to 1980s, that, those key periods of time. Um, now, when we lived in the pre-modern society, we were a unit of production. We lived in big, large, extended families, as you can see down here, with a nuclear family at the core. Now, in this notion, we all lived within one big community, one big house in the countryside, very much rural living uh, with a scribe status. We were born into that family, we were born farmers, we were gonna be farmers. So we grew up and within our family. And what Parsons said was we had these large extended families. And what would happen is that all the children, as you can see here, would often work. They were economic assets. Now, within this style of family life, the family provided all the roles of the families you see at the bottom. So they were the source of religious information. They provided education for the children. They stabilized the adult personalities. We're gonna talk about stabilization of adult personalities again in a second. They provided healthcare and medicine. All the food was grown on the farm. We were units of production, as it says here at the top. And uh, you know, law and order was enforced through the family. They provided primary socialization and the home and the family was your source of employment, your source of work. So this is what everything, this is how the family worked in the pre-modern time. Now, the key thing, the key change the Parsons brought in was industrialization. Now, between 1750 and 1900, we, industrialization began to take place. And this is where the shift and change in the family began to emerge. So the first change was the family obviously went from being a large extended family to a small nuclear core. And part of the reason for this was um, to allow them to transition into the industrialized era. So being a small family, as Parsons suggested, provided greater geographical mobility, the mobility being that they could move easily around the country. So the family, obviously living in the rural countryside, they wanted to be part of industrialization. They needed to move to the big city. So what would happen is this smaller family unit was easier for them to travel from the countryside to the city. So first thing is geographical mobility. The family became smaller and more mobile. Now, this also fits in with Parsons' concept of functional fit just here. So the family became smaller so it could fit into industrialised society because you were coming from large families, in large rural areas, in large countryside houses to, as you can see up here, small urbanised living. So maybe one family cramped into a small room. You were not going to get an entire extended family into one small space. So the family became smaller. And that created the mobility to move in the city. Now, when we moved into the city, a few things happened. So we changed from units of production to units of consumption. City living was obviously small scale, hence the, the theory of functional fit, the small in size of the family. And our achievement and our status, sorry, became based on achievement. So we achieved our status through social class. And this is what leads to my next area. I'm just gonna change the color of the highlighter to social mobility down here in that middle arrow. So what happened was in the previous family where we had an ascribed status, where we were born as a farmer, and that's what we were gonna be. In the city, we had achieved status. We would become a worker and we could work our way up the hierarchy of the factory or the industry or where we were. So we had mobility, we could move up and down 
the social class structure. And obviously social class began to develop in modern industrialized society. So we looked at this very, the very beginning that working class, middle class, upper class, this division began to occur. So this is the family shifting from urban, sorry, from rural living to urban living and becoming small and uh, nuclear. Now, what I want to talk about is that nuclear family. So we're going to move on to talk about the role of the nuclear family in modern society. So in the past, in the extended family, everyone worked together. Now, in the modern urban family, a few kind of things were happening. So here's this modern urban family. So there started to happen this division of roles between men and women. So men adopted the instrumental role. Men were the workers. They went to work. Women took on the expressive role, the housework role, predominantly providing and looking after the children. Now, this is related to policy. So the, the Factory Act in the 1900s barred women from entering the workforce. So this is what created the housewife role. And it, in such, created the traditional nuclear family with gender roles. I'm just going to get rid of that highlighter because it's not very clear. So the traditional nuclear family with traditional gender roles. Um, obviously, in the past, in the pre-modern family, the children who we saw over here were economic assets. They provided an income. However, in the urban modern family, they became an economic liability. Children could not work, so therefore women had to take on that role. Now, in this traditional nuclear family, we've got men going off to work, providing the instrumental role. They are the breadwinners. Women are the expressive role. They provide all the caring, nurturing and supporting of men. Now, men come home from work tired, stressed and angry. And what uh, Parsons said was part of women's role was to provide a warm bath, the warm bath theory. Now, the warm bath theory is that women are the warm bath. Women are performing a role. So just like a warm bath, when you're tired and you get in a nice warm bath and it de-stresses you and calms you down, Parsons said that women performing their role as housewives were that warm bath. The family was the warm bath. Men come home after a long, tiring day to be de-stressed in the family. And the purpose of that is one of the functions of the family. So I'm going to jump back down to the role of the family and then how this relates in. So in the pre-modern family, right at the bottom here was the roles. The family had those uh, eight key roles, religion, education, stabilization of uh, adult personalities, medicine, employment, primary stock, rules and order and food. Now, what happened as the family moved from the pre-modern to modern was the family became smaller but also the structure change. We went through this process called structural differentiation. The structure became different. So we know physically the structure became different, the family became smaller, but also the roles of the family became different. So as you can see, religion was taken over by the church. We lost religion. Education was taken over by schools. Finances, employment was taken over by business. Hospitals took over healthcare. Shops took over food production and buying food, the police took over law and order. So all the roles were lost. The only thing that family were left with was primary sock and uh, socialising children and soap. That stabilisation of the adult personalities. And this is where the warm bath comes back. So by women acting as the warm bath, they are stabilising the adult personality, but predominantly the male adult personality. So this was what Parsons was suggesting. One of the things that happened, the family became smaller as it moved from pre-modern to modern, uh, losing the extended family network around it. The family became small to fit modern society. By doing so, the family also changed its structure. We came from a extended family to a nuclear family with traditional gender roles. Men becoming the instrumental breadwinner going to work. Women remaining the expressive housewife and women acting as the warm bath. So men come home tired, women de-stress them, and that stabilizes adult personalities. And that fulfills the two functions the family was left with. So the key concepts, the key ideas overall for Parsons is functional fit, geographic mobility, social mobility, 
structural differentiation and the warm bath theory. Hopefully this provides some summary of Parsons theory and I hope if you didn't make or this didn't make any sense you're not sure just feel free to contact me or Joe and we can explain it to you. Okay thank you for listening.